Well, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to um, our Wednesday reconvening of our um, SPNP meeting to deal with our annual plan. Um, this morning, we'll just kick off quickly with um, some apologies. Uh, so I understand we have apologies from Councillor Weber uh, to Kanohi Mariata, and there's a leave of absence, obviously, for Councillor Barnes. Um, and I believe Councillor Pettit is leaving for a brief period of time uh, from about 9.15 to about 10.30 or so. Um, beyond that, he will, will be with us for the rest of the day. Uh, so if I could have somebody, uh, Lou's going to uh, move that for me. Bruce will second it. All those in favour say aye. aye. And carried. Now, so just moving straight into um, the deliberation section of our annual plan, uh, we have a quick presentation from Ken, who's going to give us a bit of a recap on these issues. And um, yeah, I'll pass over to you then, Ken. Sorry, I should um, should have the microphone on so I can be heard. Um, yeah, so look, essentially just a, a little bit of a recap of where we were at um, financially, um, the lead up to the um, to the draft annual plan, and then um, yeah, I guess where we're here now, um, particularly um, yeah, where, where we are now, um, particularly in regard to um, to some of the staff recommendations on on financial proposals coming through. So um, yeah, Jenny, if you just flick to the next slide, that would be good. Thank you. It will, I was going to say it will be worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. Okay, so look, um, yeah, very much um, recap um, territory. This um, the, the slide. So um, yeah, so and you're very very familiar with the slide. You've seen it multiple times um, before. Um, but um, year two of the LTP. Um, in terms of the rates re requirement um, coming down, third line down, um, yeah, um, essentially it was a, it was a requirement in the LTP for for a four point four percent increase in rates. Um, at the time, the um, the LGCI was um, the, the local government um, cost index um, was two point nine percent. Um, our policy is um, is is um, two percent is um, LGCI plus two percent. So um, yeah, so therefore at the time of the LTP a year or so back, um, yeah, we had a rate summit of 4.9%. So, um, yeah, 4.4, living nicely within the 4.9. Um, this was this was the one year in the LTP where we kind of got a little bit close to that um, that, that's, that rate summit. Um, the other ones had much more of a buffer. Um, yeah, but we did, um, yeah, we did have a half a percent buffer in the LTP. Over to the um to the column over to to the right in terms of where we landed when we um when we actually adopted the draft annual plan for consultation, and you can see that the numbers changed um changed a bit in terms of the um the net rates um net rates requirement um that the increase required had just dropped just ever so marginally to to four point three percent, um but the big one was um and as we explained at the time was that the rates limit had actually um had actually dropped um quite considerably as well because um yeah because crazily um LGCI um despite the fact that we're we're sort of in a very high inflationary environment at the moment um yeah LGCI had dropped to 2.4 so our um LGCI plus two percent um, had us at 4.4%. So, um, yeah, so net, net, yeah, an, an, an increase of 4.3% against the limit of 4.4%. We were literally right up against the limit. So, um, yeah, like I say, very much um, refresher territory. If we flick to the next slide. Uh, oh, I'll just yep. quickly so, ask on then. So, the LGCI has dropped to 2.4. Um, practically, do you think that that's. Um, if we did it again now in the inflationary environment that we're in, it, logically it doesn't seem seem sensible that it's actually dropping. Yeah. I would have thought it was going the other way. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, look, look, there was a, a point we made at the time we adopted the draft. It was almost um, unbelievable um, that, that that was there. Um, the LGCI is independently assessed by um, by an organisation called Bull. Um, yeah, and that that was their their assessment. Um, so um, yeah, so Taituara, um, the previously um, Society of Local Government Managers, um, yeah, have for, for years commissioned um, Bull to produce the LGCI. Um, yeah, those were the, the you know the two views of relevance here was it was that 
2.9. That um, it dropped to 2.4 when, yeah, when um, yeah, historic inflation seems to be seems seems to be really really pushing ahead. But yeah, but um, yeah. So like like say, um, it's difficult to comprehend as it is. Um, yeah, that was that was what we were faced with. Okay, so um, yeah, so on to um, obviously um, annual plan um, submissions um, com coming through. So this, uh, the, the, so this wasn't um, obviously this is not an LTP. Um, usually the bids for money um, tend to come through um, come through the LTP process. Um, but um, yeah, but um, yeah, with, with an annual plan, invariably you do get a few um, a few requests um, for for funds as well from community organisations, and we certainly have have seen that here. Um, so yeah, so look, um, basically this. On the on the board, and it's probably worth just quickly um quickly walking walking through them. Um, but essentially, this is just a summary of the staff advice that is already obviously in the um in, in the papers for this for this meeting. So so in terms of the Cambridge Rest Haven Trust, they were they were looking for eighty four thousand um, dollars. so so essentially for for council to um to um I guess fully fund a um a studio unit in their um in their quite significant um development. Um, yeah, so um, so eighty four thousand dollars was their request. Um, what um, what staff are saying, and, and this of course has um, has come from the um, from the finance and corporate committee meeting a, a month or so back. Um, yeah, what what staff are re recommending there is that if you do have a mind to um, yeah to to actually um, meet that request of eighty four thousand um, dollars, that comes out of the pensioner housing reserve fund. So um, yeah, so essentially no no rates in that. If you look at that right hand column. Um, yeah, we're saying you can do that, um, and and there won't be a won't be a rates impact. Um, Home Cycling Charitable Trust, of course, um, yeah, came and um, presented um, yesterday at the, at the hearings. Uh, what they are looking for is a very significant amount of um, of money. They're looking for seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. I'm sure that there will be um, there will be some discussions on that on that this morning. Um, but the staff advice at this stage is do not include, um, and so therefore a, a nil a nil rates impact. Um, Waikato Screen again um, presented um, yesterday. They were looking for thirty six thousand five hundred and nineteen. Um, yeah, the staff recommendation is is very much saying that um, yeah that we will um, yeah we are supporting already. We are supporting that um, in kind um, significant assistance from um, from Steve to Steve Tritt um, and into into that space. Um, so um, yeah, so yeah, but um, the staff recommendation is yeah no 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 actual funds going to that. Um, so therefore, nil rates impact. Um, Friends of Hamilton Zoo Incorporated again. They um, they presented yesterday. They were looking for ten thousand um, dollars. The staff recommendation is do not include. Um, of course, all these things will be yeah. You're you're about to about to debate and discuss. Um, that, you know, I'm very much just setting out what the what the staff recommendations are. So um, yeah, so so nil there. Um, Tiamutu Chamber of um, of Commerce. Um, so um, yeah, so obviously the proposition was for. A business, um, a business incubator. Um, so um, yeah, so what we've, um, what we are saying there in terms of the staff advice, um, that there's two parts to this. So there's, um, yeah, so there's a, a fifteen thousand um, dollar initial, initial seeding, seeding, seeding money, um, and then, um, and then another thirty five thousand dollars that would be subject to a successful trial and, and an appropriate business case. Um, what we are saying is that we do have some, some funds already in the, um, in the annual plan um, that we could um, potentially um, provide them with the 15,000. So the staff recommendation is, uh, yeah, we, we, we can do that, we can provide that first 15. Um, the, the, the other 35 would have to be looked at um, depending on the outcome of that um, of that, of that trial, etc. So um, yeah, so again, no rates impact because we, we believe we've got a pocket of money we can use. Um, Ohopua Community Sport and Recreation Centre presented um, presented yesterday. They, were, they are bidding for um, um, well, well, the nominal figure that they put on it was $16,000. Um, you'll see our, that our staff comment is pointing them to that um, that COVID nineteen recovery fund, um, so um, money that already exists. So no no rates impact. Um, the last two, um, Cambridge Town Hall Community Trust. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, Kirsty and, and Rob presented presented yesterday again. Um, so they were initially looking for one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Yeah, you you heard them yesterday. Um, staff have worked very very closely with them to um, yeah to get that um, yeah that need for for funding down to um, down to forty thousand um, dollars. 
um, this is obviously a pretty cool thing in terms of um, in terms of um, council. Um, yeah, council um, has, has only recently established that um, that trust of quite enthusiastic trustees. Um, yeah, basically the challenge we gave to them was activate that place. Um, yeah, they do need to be financially resourced for that. Um, yeah, money is very very tight, but but like I say, we have um, we have pushed the demand down from 150 to 40. Um, so you will see a staff recommendation there that we meet that. Forty thousand dollars out of rates, um, so therefore you do see a figure in the um, in the right hand column, um, and then the last one, which actually the last one is very difficult for me to talk about, um, but but you can see a staff recommendation in the um, in the in the papers um, that are saying in regard to the Waipa Community Trust um, and their request for for three and a half thousand dollars. Of, um, of, of funding to meet their administrative costs. Um, yeah, the staff recommendation there was, um, I guess, on, on the basis of the, um, yeah, on the basis of the, the multiplying effect of that, of that money in terms of community fundraising, um, the suggestion was that we do fund that by three and a half thousand. So therefore, um, yeah, a three and a half thousand dollar rate impact. Okay, so that's, um, yeah, that's just a snapshot there. So if we, um, yeah, sorry, back one slide. Kent, sorry, uh, just through the chair. Just, ask, just a clarification. Yeah. It, well, it's, a, it's a point, really. Um, and it's to do with that home of cycling. And it was just a comment you made there that by not funding it, there's, there's no impact on rates, which I totally understand. But by funding it, is there would there also be no impact on rates if it came from the area that, that, that those folks had asked for it from? Because it's in the ten-year plan. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So through, through the chair. So um, so Mike. I yeah. So just um, just thinking about your your question there. So um, yeah. So there is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Obviously, was provided for in the LTP, um, but that was provided for for a Cambridge Museum project. Um, so yeah, so yes, so, so you're right. That money does um, does already exist in the um, in the LTP, um, and I guess um, yeah, the LTP um, yeah, you know, but basically incorporates the costs associated with that. The seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the LTP was borrowed money. So um, yeah, so um, yeah, so we were we were we were basically going to uh, going to borrow that money and then um, and then um, yeah, you know, push that into the capital development for for the Cambridge Museum. I think I just yeah. Thanks. I just wanted to clarify that. I mean, I've, I'm not going to comment any further. It was just a point of clarification. So, thank. Cool. Okay. No, that's that's good. So, if we go to the next slide, Jenny. Oh, sorry. Us just following on from that. Was, was that um, uh, funding requirement anticipated in the year we're talking about, 22, 23 year? You know. Uh, ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, so through the chair, uh, and actually Yolanda, can, I think it's the following year, isn't it? Is Yolanda there? Uh, I think yes. it is. Uh, yeah. Yes, Chair, I'm, I'm here. Um, as far as I know, it's in the following year. I'm sure it's detailed in the staff comments on, on that particular oh, okay. application, yeah. If, yes. if I can, through the chair, yes, I can confirm that there is funding identified of that 750k, 100,000 is in this current financial year. Um, the rest of the funding is in the following year um, after this annual plan year that we're talking about. So it's not actually funded in this annual plan year that we're discussing. Okay, so yes, yep, no, that's, that's fine. Thank, thank you for that. I think that, that clarifies the question. Okay, is there through the chair? Is there any further questions just before we move on to this next slide? No, go, for, go for the next slide. Okay, look, um, oh, actually, this next slide pretty much um says everything I was going to say. So um, yeah, so so if you're in reference to that table just before, yeah, so so essentially the staff recommendations are, are basically pointing you towards um, yeah, um, forty three and a half thousand dollars of additional funding coming into the annual plan. Um, what that would do is it would take our four point three percent that we went out in the draft. It will will just push it up um to um to 
4.4%. So we will be right on the rates limit, um, obviously. Um, and then I guess um, the, the important point is the, the third bullet point on that screen in front of you. So therefore, if you um, if you are of a mind to um, you know, to put any extra demand on rates um, in the 22-23 year, the annual plan that you're you're, you're looking to adopt, um, yeah, what that means is um, is one of two things. Um, either you will punch um, punch through that that rates limit, so we would have a, a rates increase of greater than four point four percent when we had um, when we had set that um, set that limit, or, or else. Oh, or else we would have to find um, savings elsewhere. Roger, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Okay, so so important point. Um, yeah, yeah, you're looking for any more than forty three and a half thousand, or looking to provide for more than forty three and a half thousand. Either we need to find the savings elsewhere, or um, yeah, or we would be looking to to punch through that rates limit. And um, yeah, and I guess the uh, the next slide, which is the last slide, just um shows you that in a um in a picture essentially. Um, so the slide I showed you at the start of the presentation, nothing obviously changes for year two of the LTP. Um, but you'll see a couple of very small tweaks in the right-hand column. So um, total rates required would um, would go from 7.2 up to 7.3. Growth would remain the same. Net rates, um, that net rates line then is 4.4, um, which is obviously um, the exactly the same number as, as the rates limit. Okay, so that's the um, that's the context, but we um, yeah, we just thought it was important just to um to to talk about that just so you're yeah you're, you're aware really of of the of the lay of the land um and and in particular um the tightness of the of the situation yeah. Through the, through the chair, could I just ask you another question, um, Ken, for clarification? Because it's it's about the growth. Like I don't I don't recall you saying whether or not staff had 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 a closer look to that to see if we're on track for two point nine percent or if it's even higher because that often is also taken into account when we're doing this deliberation. Yes, that, that, that's correct. Um, so, so through the chair, um, Councillor Council St. Pierre, um, look, this one's a, a bit of a tricky one because, um, yeah, we do, we do obviously report on, on where we're at against that growth figure on a, on a regular basis. Um, and we are actually um, trailing that quite significantly at the moment. Um, but look, it's one of those unfortunate things because the, the, yeah, yeah, the growth figure that you're seeing is essentially the growth in the, um, in the rating base. Um, and that growth in the rating base comes from from new properties coming on board and, and obviously um, paying a, a UAGC each. Um, it's also coming from, um, from other forms of development and including those, those new properties when the capital value increases. So um, yeah, so, so we do um, we do obviously monitor that um, quite closely um, dur during the year. Um, but I, I think, and, um, and actually Yolanda might be able to help with, um, with where that was last, um, we, we, we are trailing that quite significantly and uh, I think we might be early ones in terms of that 2.9, or, although that's not too much of a surprise because what we are generally reliant on here is, um, is quotable value um, do, doing um, doing the doing the valuation work um, as new properties come on board and um, yeah and and actually um, identifying what the capital value increases um, yeah there um, yeah but, but basically there's always a big catch up as we um, as we get close to 30 June in, ter in terms of um, recognizing that capital value and bringing it into our system so um, yeah so so we're quite quite some way distant of the 2.9 but still hopeful that we will hopeful that we'll get there by by 30th of June um, but look I. I don't think there's. Um, I don't think it's very likely that we will exceed that in, in any um, by any great degree. Okay. Um, thanks, Ken. I must say, I, I I'm not that clear on the relevance of the capital value increase because I would have thought it was the number of rating units that are being added to our our rating database, which probably feeds through from you know those um, developers getting their titles issued and. Um, people getting their building consent signed off, which I thought would have been a council process and therefore council should have a good handle on the rating unit increase numbers. 
Uh, uh, yes, so, so we probably do have a, um, through the chair, we probably do have a better handle on the rating unit um, increase, um, but, but look, that capital value factor is quite significant. So, so, so about half of our, um, half of our rates income is, is coming from, um, from capital value rates. Um, and when a, um, when a subdivision happens, um, as the land is cut up into smaller lots, um, capital value will increase um, as, um, yeah, as um, new, new dwellings um, are built on are built on that land, then obviously there's capital value associated with with that. So um yeah so um yeah and so so that new capital value coming on board um, needs to be assessed by um by quotable value, um, both the land portion and the building improvement um, portion. Um, and yeah and like I say there is there is sometimes a lag in terms of them actually doing that valuation work so that we can recognise that capital value in the in the system. Um, okay thanks thanks good to know all that detail thank you. Right. Any further questions for Ken in terms of his presentation, giving us a summary of where we're at? Yeah, uh, Liz. Yeah, just, just a quick one. So there are a couple of other submissions, I think, Ken, um, in, uh, that we probably haven't, I guess, even just noted. And I guess it would be helpful for me to understand, maybe get some, um, some direction on rural roading. So the request for Godfrey Road and Pahu, but also the peat lakes. So the submission we had yesterday from Alistair Nicole. So yeah, just to get an understanding of where we, um, yeah, perhaps perhaps some of the uh, funding in our, in our um, annual plan is already allocated to some of the requests. I don't know. So yeah, be keen to get a staff comment. Thanks. Yeah, no, they're good points to raise. Um, so in terms of going forward, um, I suspect it's probably better that we ad ad address the um, actual applications made by, um, by individuals or organisations um, for funding as we've had them appear here. And it might be helpful perhaps if we can go back to that slide, Jenny, where it was set out um, um, in the beginning of Ken's presentation, um, setting out organisation, the sum they sought and the recommendations and then whether there was a rating impact. And perhaps we just pick them off from the top going down. It sort of makes sense, does it not? So the Cambridge Rest Haven Trust, obviously not quite inside this, this process, but nevertheless, a discussion we had um, in terms of uh, addressing the, the need from pensioner housing fund reserves. It, uh, I'll open the floor up for comment. Do people have any um, express or very clear views around what how we should go with this, Liz? And then um, Marcus. Thank you, Susan. Yes, I do have a very clear view. Um, so look, this is a community-led organisation. Um, and for me, you know, as a non-profit group, um, I know Cambridge fully supports this organisation and the work that it does. So fully su support this um, request 100%. Thanks, Liz. Marcus? Oh, yeah. <coughs> I was just reflecting, yeah, same with Liz's comments. Excellent, okay. L um, Jim, do you looking like you want to say something? Yeah, no, look, it was my suggestion, I think, that we possibly could look at that funding source. So, yeah. look, I, I fully support it as okay. another unit, isn't it, in Cambridge, and we couldn't build it for that. Excellent, okay. So, online, we have Claire, Phil, then Roger, please. Yes, I also support it. I'm really pleased to see that there's a bit of lateral thinking going on to see how it could be funded, yeah, and that it's it's good value for money money while also expanding yeah, the options for our pensioners. So definitely support it. Excellent. Thank you, Claire. Philip, then Roger. Thanks, Madam Chair. Just confirming my conflict of interest here. Just a reminder. My apologies. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. And Roger. Yeah, just moving on to me. Yes, I fully support it as well. And I, I noticed the, uh, the, the rental statement in there as well, which is um, uh, continuing to provide um, affordable rental accommodation for that uh, age group. So that's good. Yeah, so fully support that. Excellent. Well, it looks to me like there's no dissenting voice in respect of, of that um, request for funding. So I think we can safely say that that is fully supported by council at this point. So we'll move on then to the next one, which is the Home of Cycling Charitable Trust. Uh, the recommendation from staff is not to include, and obviously therefore having no rates impact as discussed earlier by Ken. Um, have we got any, is there, who's going to start this discussion? Jim. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, look, I, um, I support the um, home Cycling Charitable Trust, um, I suppose, project in terms of, of establishing this attraction for, for Cambridge. Uh, 
I think um, with our investment, <coughs> excuse me, in, into cycling and the ability to uh, encourage more visitors to the district is, is a great initiative. Um, I just do uh, support staff though, in terms of um, just transferring that 750 from another project that had public scrutiny. And I think that um, I would really like to see us with a positive um, decline, if you like, um, saying that we, uh, in general, we support the, the principle, but we need to go back to the public and, and just test their willingness to support and, and to what quantum that's likely to be. Um, I just think it's probably um, challenging for us to go straight to 750 that was earmarked for, a, for another project without consulting with the public. Uh, I, I do, and although I wasn't involved, I do recall that uh, there was a, a great deal of public um, concern initially when we invested in, in the uh, 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 Avanti Drome as it was then. Um, but look, I don't think there are many people around Cambridge and the district that wouldn't say that that was a great investment. So look, I think um, uh, some positive vibes um, supporting the initiative and, and and I'm not sure how we would go through uh, getting this out to the public for some discussion, but um, uh, at the moment, I, I can't see us just transferring that 750. Yeah, yeah th thank you, Mike. Uh, sorry, um, Jim, I'm just noting also that we have a couple of um, uh, members who are actually conflicted on this, so I won't call on either of you. Um, yeah, uh, Liz, did you have your hand up? No, you're not, not yet, no. Uh, look, for my part, I have a um, certain level of um, discomfort, I suppose, around the process. Um, uh, but like you, I, I think it'd be a fantastic um, opportunity for Cambridge. It fits really very snugly with a, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the other uh, projects and offerings in Cambridge. But I just feel a, a level of dis-ease about transferring, if you like, um, a loan from one entity to another, um, even, uh, even, even though, despite the fact that it is uh, possibly a, a, a good, a good um, project, I also feel like we need to find out from our community whether they, whether they actually support that kind of um, investment in, um, in our district. So that's sort of where I sit, um, yeah, on, on that at the moment. Lou. I'd like to reflect completely on what you just said, Madam Chair, but I was going to ask, the funding was actually allocated for next year anyway, wasn't it? Uh, as I understood your statement, that it was next year two of the annual plan. So I we are that. talking of, it was in this year. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, so through, through the chair, I think um, Sally covered that just before and, our, and in fact, the submission response covers that. Um, so so $100,000 in the current financial year, so 21-22, right, right, right. then there's a gap of a year and then the other 650 is in the 23-24 year. So extension of that borrowing, even if we did provide it, would have an effect on our rates at all or not, on our borrowing levels or not? Oh, so, so if we, so through the chair, so if we were to give the money to, uh, where, where should I, I suppose actually that the, the interesting thing here is that the Home Cycling Charitable Trust won't be able to build this thing tomorrow anyway, so, so they would probably be looking at 23, 24 or 25 even. In, in terms of needing that money, so um, yeah, so yeah, so it, so it kind of it kind of does fit fit the um the, the timing in the LTP, um, but but of course for an entirely different um entirely different project than than what we set aside the money for. And also, I'd just like to re react to both what Jim and uh, Mayor, Madam Chair said. Yeah, I think we've got to go back to the public. It's it's a it's a big variation on what we originally voted for. Yeah, thank you, Lou. Now, online we have uh, Claire, Phil, and then Andrew. Um, thank you. And, and yes, I just agree with um, definitely um, Jim and Susan as well and, and Lou, yeah, that I think we need, to, it's a great project um, and it stacks up really well, but I do feel we need to go back to our community and, and follow the correct process. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Phil and then Andrew. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I fully support uh, their proposal and, and the project. Um, this is not just for Cambridge, this is for WIPA, that's what we're here for as well, and, and for the Waikato. Um, how we fund it is, is something we really need to look into, uh, like you've all mentioned just, just now. Um, 
but fully support this project and it's and it'll be what a be to be fantastic for our community the whole community the, the Waikato as well so um this is this is fantastic but, but so fully support the project and but how we fund it and where the money comes from uh we just need to look into that a bit more thank you thanks phil uh andrew yeah i concur with all of everything that's been said must follow the process properly Excellent. Liz. Yeah, no, um, thank you, Susan. Hey, so I guess um, I'm really keen to see um, the historical society money separated very clearly from this project. I'm not sure that, uh, and, and I, I think it's probably some of the online um, conversations we had yesterday, but members of the Cambridge community have actually been contacting me overnight saying, well, what's happening with the with the new museum? You know, is is it completely dead in the water? Um, so I think I really need to understand where that is and whether there's another community group who wants to investigate further. So um, I have had some suggestion that uh, Cambridge um, doesn't, I guess, want to, um, you know. I discard the any opportunity going forward for a new museum for Cambridge, you know, from the, you know, the actual historical um, side of it. So, yeah, I just want to keep that quite separate. So this is a new project from the Home of, home of Cycling. Absolutely, it has merit, no question about it. We, we, as I said yesterday, we have a real lack of destinational product anyway. But we've had almost zero lack of con consultation with our community. Um, you know, this was always a bit of a fiery topic but back then, uh, you know, when the Advantage Job was being um, built. And I think we need to, we owe it to our community to go back and say, hey, look, this is a, this is a different, um, I guess, request. Um, it has, has, I guess, some opportunities. So let's take a, a really good hard look at that. Um, and yeah, make sure we do this right. Yeah, make sure we really, really do this right. Hamilton City absolutely needs to be part of this as well. I mean, the advantage room where it's positioned means it will benefit both part, both the city and uh, Waipa. So if there's economic benefit going both ways, then, um, you know, the, the, I guess the, you know, the proposition needs to go to both councils as well. So I just think we need more time to consider it um, and probably, uh, you know, take, take the time now. Let's hear back if we can from the organization to get more clarity around what the business plan looks like um, and a lot more detail we didn't really we, we didn't get to see the video yesterday obviously um, I feel like I need to be enthused um, I need to I need to sense the excitement and I definitely need to sense some excitement from our um, Cambridge community and Waipa as well so I think there's a lot of a lot more to do yeah, thank thank you, Liz. I, I you know I think you've echoed all the sentiments that most of us have shared in terms of you know having a really good feeling about the project, but perhaps not so confident in terms of the process. And let's make sure our community actually want it. Gary, were you um, wanting to add something there? Well, yes, I think the um, the group is looking for a signal anyway. So I'm just wondering if that signal is to say, in in principle, uh, the the project uh, sounds like it's one that fits well with uh, the vision. And the direction we're heading, but but any funding would be subject to a further consultative process, and that's likely to be the next annual plan. Given given that they're not looking to draw funds down for probably at least eighteen months. Yeah, that that makes a, a lot of sense, doesn't it? Okay. So have we captured that? Over there, let, yeah, excellent. So, is there any more discussion to be had on that one, Phil? I see you have your hand up. Have you not put it down, or? Yeah, just uh, quickly, Madam Chair. Just um, yeah, just uh, support uh, what Gary just said. But um, just off the cuff, I mean, uh, is there an opportunity to build, uh, include a museum, Cambridge Museum, at the Home Cycling, with the Hall of Fame? Just off the cuff. I uh, know it's not in town, but um, is there an opportunity? It's just, it's just come to my mind. Ken. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so through the chair, I mean, quite clearly, that would have to be a question um, that, yeah, directed at the Home Cycling Charitable Trust, because um, yeah, because obviously there's capacity constraints, um, and and also, I guess, in terms of material, it would be quite um, quite different, obviously, from a from a sports hall of fame, because the um, the, the museum would assumably be be telling the the district story, or or certainly the Cambridge side of the of the district story. Um, yeah, just in relation to and and um, yeah, Councillor Stolwick was. Um, 
um, was talking about this um, the, this a little bit earlier when 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 she spoke in terms of where we're we were where we were latest at I suppose in terms of um, in terms of Cambridge Museum um, the thinking and this is referred to in the um, in the submission response um, yeah the the most most recent thinking since the um, since the group gave up their fundraising efforts for a specific um, standalone Cambridge Museum um, the thinking was that um, yeah that we would look to perhaps in, in, incorporate a development um, that, that incorporated a, a library um, yeah Cambridge is in, is in need of a um, of an expanded library space so 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 library museum um, and even even potentially a customer service centre so um, yeah so that's very much um, yeah what um, what what staff have um, have talked about of more recent times. Um, yeah, the councillors, you'll you'll recall when the um, when the Cambridge Bunnings building was on the market, um, we thought that that was potentially an opportunity to um, to to do a development of that um, of that of that nature. Um, of course, we we missed out on that building, so um, that, yeah, that um, that got got sold elsewhere. So um, yeah, so that um, yeah, so that hasn't happened. But I guess that is in the thinking, and of course, that was very very much in the thinking of the um, the fundraising group um, at the time that they abandoned um, their efforts. So that they, they, they actually they actually wrote to us and, and they said in September of last year and they said hey can this seven hundred and fifty thousand go into a joint library museum um, proposition so yeah so so I guess that's kind of where the museum is is at the moment. Just on that, Ken. So if if let's say crystal ball gazing um, after the next annual plan, uh, we get a very clear steer from Cambridge community that they want. Um, the Sports Hall of Fame and funding is granted for that purpose. Where would that put the proposition of uh, a, a, library, a new library for Cambridge? Would that put that in jeopardy, would we think? Because this, I mean, we had, we did talk about earmarking that, potentially using that money for Bunnings, which would be a library. I mean, it's really a case of finding, finding out what the community's priorities are, I guess, and, and, that, and have all of those options actually canvassed and understood. Yes. Would that be right? Uh, yeah, look, it, look, it is um, quite complex because, um, yeah, because, um, yeah, so there is no funding at all in the 10-year plan for, for a Cambridge library. Um, so, so despite the fact that that has been identified for quite some time, um, that, that, uh, that a far greater, um, greater floor space is required for the Cambridge library. Um, yeah, when we pulled together the, the long-term plan, um, that, that, that was a, um, that, there was a project brief for that. Um, we, we looked at the uh, potentially putting money in, we, 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 we just, just didn't have the capacity to put the, put the money in so um yeah so um yeah at this stage that's not not funded um of course the other thing that's um that, that's very much happening in the community um facility spaces um is TROI um and TROI while while there is some um, quite significant funding provision in the um in the long-term plan for TROI um that that would certainly need to be um that would certainly need to be supplemented as well so um yeah so so, so look I guess there's a there's a, there is a few projects on 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 the go um and there is um, there is not adequate funding in the um, in the LTP for all of them for, for things like Cambridge libraries, Cambridge museums, um, to DIY, yeah, yeah, you know, quite significant funding still required for all all three of those those projects. Yeah, interesting, Liz. Yeah, um, look, thank you, Ken. I think I'm probably more confused now. Um, <laughs> um, so, so look, we had a, a very compelling, um, you know, request from the Cambridge Museum Historical Society several years ago. And, and that was backed by the Cambridge community. You know, for a, for a specific Cambridge Museum, um, we heard that there were a lot of items that were in storage that needed to be on display, saw some fantastic designs. I appreciate that, that um, the environment isn't, ha hasn't you know, worked well uh, to be able to, to successfully fundraise. So are you saying that back in September they um, we're very keen as an organisation to work with council and be part of a complex, i.e. the library and whatever else, but then submitted to this annual plan saying, actually, um, how about you just um, transfer the money for the project over to the home recycling? Was that, was that, a, was that actually a, um, is that, is that they, they kind of flip-flopped a little bit? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm just a bit, I want to be really clear in my mind because I, I sort of feel that the request to reallocate the money, it's not like for like. And I want to be sure that we're doing the right thing by the Cambridge community um, and that we approve money for a Cambridge museum to, to display Cambridge items. And I just want to be clear in my mind about what the request is and what the history is of it. 
Okay. So, um, if I can, so. through the chair, um, uh, respond to the questions that's been uh, raised around the uh, Cambridge Heritage Charitable Trust. So as identified in, I think, page 1060 of the agenda, um, the Heritable uh, the Cambridge Heritable Charitable Trust was wound up in September 2021. And the reasons for that was, um, you know, the, the times that they found themselves in to try um, with COVID impact to try and fundraise for a new development. Within the paper, we've identified um, the, the motion that was passed by that trust that has subsequently been wound up, where it um, highlighted that uh, the fund that they were um, given for the development of a new um, Cambridge Museum building um, be tagged for a future library museum complex in Cambridge. Subsequent to the trust being wound up, um, obviously the Home of Cycling have this opportunity with the Sports Hall of Fame and relocating that um, into Cambridge. So my understanding is that there has been discussions um, with the past members of uh, the Cambridge Heritable Trust and that was where their support came in to support the Home of Cycling Charitable Trust with the opportunity with this new um, Sports Hall of Fame. So 100% in terms of um, what councillors that you are, are raising is that the 750000 was approved by council for the development of a, um, a Cambridge Museum. We haven't um, there hasn't been any decisions made by council in terms of that funding, and therefore, um, it, you know, as opportune as that, that there is this money um, there, but it is a very different purpose for what the Home of Cycling Charitable Trust is requesting it for. So essentially, um, from from that perspective, we've got the 750,000 or 650,000 in year 23-24 of the long-term plan that is still identified within that budget. Uh, within the budget, um, but that was identified to support um, essentially a new museum and subsequently the feedback from that trust around a joint complex. So I think it's uh, the, the timing has been opportune around that trust being wound up and this, this opportunity with the Sports Hall of Fame, but essentially council hasn't made a decision of what that funding could be used for. And I think that's what you're also all raising is that we also they haven't had that conversation uh, with our community as well for a change of that funding. So from that perspective, we, um, you know, are, are suggesting that we decline this request and I think it provides us the opportunity um, to then work with um, the, the Home of Cycling Trust and to also work with our community around what their priorities are for this fund as well going forward. So hopefully that provides some background for you, Councillor Liz, in terms of what's happened, but I think it's um, opportune of time at the moment and that there is budget in and the 10-year plan that could be um, looked at. So that's the reason for the, the request. Thanks, Sally. Uh, any further questions on that, Liz? Yeah, look, I think it's really important that we just keep it really clean, personally. Um, I, I, feel, I felt a, a level of anxiety um, uh, when I, I read the um, that re uh, report, if you like, referring, uh, purporting to, for that uh, trust, purporting to tag money for future use. I just didn't feel that that was appropriate for a charitable trust. Um, uh, they could express the desire, per per perhaps, but to actually go so far as to suggest that we need to tag it, I felt was a little bit too far for me. But look, that's not to detract from the fact that the, that the project itself has some um, huge merits, but um, I think we just need to be really clean about our process and how, and how that's done. Andrew, I think you've got your hand up. Have you got a question? Yeah, thanks. No, not a question. Um, I just want to say that to me, this is a back to the drawing board, I suppose, um, in no way uh, uh, putting aside the either the Cambridge Museum or New Library or, in fact, uh, the Home Cycling Charitable Trust request, but the whole thing needs to be considered. Um, and I guess uh, it's certainly taken to the community. Um, uh, but with the knowledge that we actually have some funding in the long-term plan, um, you know, a good decent amount to get some some uh, seeding done um, to, to go to the public with saying, hey, this is already included in um, in your future rates as it stands. 
Um, so yeah, so I, you know, to me at the moment, this is put to one side, but do not forget. Excellent. Excellent. I think we've probably talked about that that one and through as much as we can, and you and staff have clearly catch caught that. Captured that. We have, I have caught that. Would you like me to um, read out what I've got written so far? That might be while helpful while it's fresh in our mind. Yeah, yeah that would I be great. So. Thanks, Joe. Um, so the House of Cycling Charitable Trust Submission Response be amended to advise that the council positively supports the project in principle and acknowledges that this project aligns well with the council's vision. However, any financial support for this project would require a greater understanding of how this project fits with the other needs of the Cambridge community and further engagement with the community, which is likely to be part as part of the council's 2023 to 2024 annual plan. Is that yeah, captured? lots of nod. Yeah, lots of nodding heads here. Um, Jim, uh, Madam Chair, could I just um, suggest we don't talk about the Cambridge community? We talk about the White Park community. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Grand, Thanks, grand idea. Grand idea. Anybody online have any feedback in terms of that um, uh, capturing of our response? Uh, Claire. Yep, very happy. Thanks, Andrew. Clear. Um, yeah, I agree with Jim to to make it the Waipa community because I put that 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 might be um, a little bit contentious and it make it widens it. So that's a good move. Thanks. Brilliant. Okay. Well, on the assumption that we're all happy with that one, we should move on then to the next one, which is the Waikato screen. They're looking for a one-off. Um, um, sum, uh, obviously multiplied by three years takes it up, us up to our thirty-six odd thousand. The staff recommendation is there that to support and kind. Um, does anybody have any clear views around around this issue? Clear, then Andrew. Um, yeah, thanks. Like I thought, um, putting that thirty six thousand as the total win. In actual fact, they're only really seeking you know a twelve thousand one hundred seventy three dollar annual investment. Um, I, I was a bit surprised that staff feel that because in-kind support is being provided that that's enough for YPA. Um, so I thought it was a really worthy project and they're obviously um, have been uh, working closely with all the councils in the Waikato to, to, to get their case yeah, considered and, and they're, they're trying to work, I think they're co-located at the airport which is going to reduce their costs. Um, so um, I guess my question is, is just saying in-kind support, is that enough? Um, because I would like YPAR to be seen to be positively supporting this initiative. Yeah, I may actually sort of have a little bit of a sympathy for your position there, Claire. Andrew, did you, did you have, have something to add? Yeah. Look, um, I'm in favour, I guess, of, of uh, Waikato Screen. It, it is... Uh, quite would be quite a speculative speculative investment on our part, in, in my view. I mean, there's no guarantee it's going to um, produce a return. Um, we would be effectively in competition with all the other um, uh, districts that have set up screen uh, projects already. Um, and and look, if staff think we can support it adequately and kind without impacting on rates, I'm all for it. So I guess my question to Ken is, um, what does the in-kind support um, um, uh, uh, consist of? And secondly, um, the, the proposal was kind of dependent on all of the districts in, in the Waikato region um, taking part. Um, what are the prospects that's, that that's actually gonna happen? Uh, so yeah, so through the chair, actually, I, I think um, in terms of your um, your question there, um, Councillor Brown, and in, in terms of what does our in kind support um, look like, um, yeah, that was very much around um, the work that um, our business development manager Steve Tritt is doing. But 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 look, I think it's probably better that um, that Kirsty speaks to that. In fact, I do see Kirsty's yeah. end up. So can we perhaps refer that question through? Yeah, Kirsty. Through you, Madam Chair, um, staff have been supportive of this initiative and the work that has been undertaken leading up to this point, the submission made through the long-term plan, 
and now this annual plan submission. Steve Tritt, as our business development manager, has been working with um, personnel from Waikato Screen to connect them with appropriate people um, to also work with them to identify potential film locations and, um, and put them in contact um, with, with people that we are also working with. You'll recall that in the submission presented, um, Waikato Screen have requested a dedicated person within Waipa District Council to be able to work with. Um, through their long-term plan submission, they specifically identified Steve Tritt. Um, so we are supportive of, of that continued um, liaison point within the organisation and also to provide that, that type of in-kind support. Um, it's not that council staff feel that that is sufficient, but rather that there is no funding um, available within the, the current um, or the 22-23 annual plan for additional financial support. Um, so that, um, that is the recommendation that is made um, within the summary of submissions and staff responses for elected member consideration. Um, as Ken highlighted when taking you through the PowerPoint presentation earlier, any additional um, funding will potentially have an impact. Um, so that, that is presented for your consideration. Thanks, Kirsty, for clarifying that. Does anybody have Jim? Madam Chair, I, I know that all everything that we add in um, is cumulative, uh, but I've I've got a, a great deal of support for this one, uh, uh, with it being you know, twelve thousand. Um, so yeah, look, I, I would really be comfortable with including the twelve thousand in in the uh, in the plan, um, and, and yeah, look, hopefully. Uh, uh, we can fund that with savings or, or um, some other um, uh, out of some other fund, but for twelve thousand dollars, I think to give the uh, initiative a, a chance to get going, I think it's money well invested. Uh, I agree that it probably is a little bit speculative, um, but the potential to uh, create employment in the district, I think it's worth the. It's worth the punt, to be fair, um, and it's not making an ongoing commitment. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'd su certainly support the the twelve thousand or whatever it is in round figures for the for the annual amount that they need. Thanks, Jim. Uh, does anybody else, uh, Andrew? You have your hand up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I. On balance, I guess I, I um, agree with Jim on that. I, it's it's a great project, and if we can keep uh, the rates to 4.4 percent while including this, then um, I would support it. Ken. <laughs> okay, okay, so look, I'm informed by our financial gurus who are who are uh, zoom, zooming in that that would take us to 4.41 percent so um, so 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 marginally over but i i guess um you're potentially roundable roundable down um you, you know we usually just have the one the, the one decimal point in our um, in our rating equation but that's that's what it's sitting like at the moment um yeah look i i yeah can, can we sort of park this in a parking yeah. lot and come back to it I mean, yeah i, I think mean, that's probably yeah, a good idea as, as well is, is the 4.41 the 36 thousand or the 12 000? Oh, uh, well, yeah. sorry, sorry. This is just with the twelve one seven three. So, um, yeah. So it's just picking up the the appropriate year, um, and okay. that would push us to four point four one. Okay. In non, you know, in this process, it, it's uh, it's always an, an adding in um, situation that we've got. But you know, even just this morning, we talked about um, the. Uh, the funding for the for the Cambridge Museum that's not going ahead, and there's a hundred thousand dollars loan funded in the 22-23 year that I presume hasn't come out as yet. Um, so look, um, what's that? Ten thousand dollars worth of rates? Yeah, uh, yeah. So so through the chair. So um, yeah. So me, me, me and Jim, we if if we borrow in one year, um, we only pick up the servicing costs the following year. So 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 in fact, the uh, you know that, that that won't actually benefit the rating equation. But uh, I mean, if there was something in the current year that we'd been looking to do and borrow for, um, then then that would obviously free up free up some capacity. I'm I'm just not sure anything's jumping to mind immediately. <laughs> um, but 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 yeah, appreciating it's it's relatively small small 
numbers. Yeah. Claire, did you want to add something? Well, yes, I did, because I just wanted to comment on um, the fact that it might take the rates increase to 4.41. And even though it is only a little bit over 10, we have been pulled up by auditors before because, you know, they, they, they say, well, it's still over, so you've breached the limit. You know, like, it, uh, it's really difficult, isn't it? But, but um, I, I just want to be wary of the fact that, you know, we can't just say, well, it's not over 4.45, so it's still going to be rounded down to 4.4. But I think if it is in an auditing situation, we won't actually be able to get away with it and we'll be held to be breaching our rates limit. Yeah, so, so look through the chair, and, and I guess this is why I suggested this one. This one sort of goes to the parking lot, and we we continue working through these. Um, if it was only this one that we were looking to, um, yeah, you know, to accommodate into the equation, um, look, I'm sure we could pull some strings to actually get us just uh, to fall down to four point three nine. <laughs> we could we, we could probably um pull some strings to make that happen, but but I, but I guess it just depends on what else comes out of these deliberations. So 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 through the chair, if I could just suggest we um yeah we note that in, in principle you'd like to include the 12173 um, but but I'd suggest we just come back to that at the, at the end of the meeting to yeah. today after we've considered the other financial implications. Yeah I think that's a grand idea. So we'll just park that one up and then move on to the next one on the list which is the Friends of the Hamilton Zoo and in, Incorporated. Um, they're seeking ten thousand dollars and the recommendation from staff is um, not to include it. Uh, does anybody in the room here or online wish to dis start off the discussion on this issue or express an, a, a contrary view? Andrew? Um, no, I'm not expressing a contrary view. Look, I um, went to the zoo with my three grand boys um, in the last holidays, only two or three weeks ago. It's it's a very worthwhile um, uh you know, asset to not just Hamilton community, but ours as well. But um, I, we're, we're already over the limit of what we can do, so I support the staff recommendation. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Anybody else like to speak to that or we're all comfortable with the staff recommendation? Yeah, it seems we're largely comfortable with that. So um, thank you for that one. We'll leave that one as recommended. Moving on then to the next one, which is the Te Omutu, uh, Chamber of Commerce. They're seeking $50,000 in, um, in two parts, as, as you'd indicated, Ken. The initial funding was for a feasibility study of sorts, uh, 15,000 initially sought for that. So um, the recommendation is to, is to meet that initial uh, feasibility request. Uh, so I'll open the floor for comments on that one. Lou, and then Claire. I'm very supportive of this. I think it, it has the potential to operate very effectively within our community. Uh, if we can find the 15,000 was actually all they needed initially anyway, who actually set up a business case and come back and get this factory proposal to it. So I think it's something that could be pursued and it doesn't look like it impacts too much on our rates at this point in time, because you've got an activity budget there for the 15. So I'm very supportive of it because I do think it's a positive action. Mm. Thanks, Lou. Claire. Um, yeah, I, I agree as well. Um, I think it's got great potential. And, you know, looking at um, trying to attract um, business opportunities or businesses for, you know, for young people and, and in, new, in new areas, diversifying our economic base. Um, and I think it really um, fits in well with our commu um, community spatial plan work too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm all for it. Um, glad that it can, that, that feasibility study can be, can be funded. And I think as it goes forward, we'll find other people or other organisations will contribute as well. So it, it shouldn't all fall on council. You know, it could easily just be us giving the seed funding and then it, it might be able to be um, funded from other sectors in our community. I think the central government too, we indicated yesterday there may be other pop avenues of, of funding there. There seems to be quite a, a bit of money available, as I understand it, in that youth development space. Uh, Roger and then Andrew. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I fully support this as well. And I think um, funding of the feasibility gives the Chamber of Commerce the resources and the, the business plan to go out and attract monies from other sources. So I think that that's really, uh, that's a positive outcome. So I, I really support this. Thanks, Roger. Andrew. 
Yeah. Um, look, I, I, I support it. Um, but I do have, I suppose, a word of warning. Um, only in that the Te Umutu Chamber of Commerce has been, I guess, relatively unstable in the last couple of years, I'll say. I don't know what the, whether that's the right word, but we've had three or four CEOs in the last 18 months, to my knowledge. Um, I've got nothing, I don't know this guy, and he seems quite competent and, and all the rest of it, but... Um, Look, it's a great concept. I'd love to see it succeed. Um, I just have some reservations about the, uh, the, the successful execution, I suppose, but I wish them all the best. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Liz. Uh, you know, thanks, um, Andrew, for those comments. Um, and I and I guess when, um, you know, this is one of the reasons why we have um, councillors elected into each of our areas because we know our areas so well. So I'm, I'm heeding that, that caution. I guess what I'm, I'm wondering perhaps is if we can, um, I guess, continue to support the initiative, uh, but perhaps the money um, that we've, uh, you know, part, are able to partially fund can be, um, I guess, not, not controlled, but perhaps can be applied to, and in a staff member work extremely closely uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, I want to ensure that the right person who's doing um, any contracting work um, is, you know, obviously, um, you know, is, is, is checked and, and we, because there's lots of companies that do this sort of work. We, I guess what you're, you're warning um, to me, Andrew, is, and is as well, um, you know, heeded because we just want to make sure that this money that we do allocate is well spent. So perhaps we just keep a much stronger, closer eye um, on, on how this actually pans out. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Kirsty. Through you, Madam Chair, um, just, just to touch on some of the points made by elected members and provide clarification. So um, the recommendation from staff is that funding be um, made available through activity um, budget that is already within the annual plan and that sits within the economic, act, um, economic development activity that was actually tagged for development and implementation of the economic wellbeing strategy. Um, those elected members who've um, recently attended a workshop session and also when we um, when Steve workshopped with you as a collective provided really strong feedback about um, a desire to connect with youth in Waipa and so this particular piece of work is, is targeted at that. Steve has been um, engaged in conversations with the Chamber and that was touched on yesterday through the presentation of the verbal submission that Steve had actually put them in contact with the Impact Hub um, who have been working out of Waikato. Um, so we could um, make that commitment that Steve be our key um, council staff contact um, for this piece of work. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that clarification, Kirsty. Look, I think that would be um, a, a good solution to assisting them, not only financially, but also with that not mentoring position, but oversight, if you like, and ongoing assistance and kind going forward, I think it would be helpful. So on the assumption that we're all comfortable with, with that um, decision, I don't see any dissenting hands or anybody jumping up and down, I guess we can move on then to the next one on the list, which is the Ohopo Community Sport and Recreation Centre. Now, Liz is going to leave the room as she's obviously conflicted in that. So thanks very much for that. The, um, they have sought $16,000 um, and obviously um, presented yesterday, um, even Debbie, uh, the staff recommendation is to consider um, meeting that request from the uh, COVID-19 recovery fund. Somebody going to kick me off, Claire, and then Andrew. Um, yeah, thanks, Susan. Look, I do really want to um, help this group because... Um, I, I, you know, they're, they're sort of um, just getting going and, you know, it's, it's, it's a really difficult um, environment um, for them um, with the loss of events. I, when I talked about it yesterday, I was under the impression, um, and I might be mistaken, that the, was cons uh, the recommendation was to seek, um, like, discretionary grant money that has, um, you know, a criteria about um, 
COVID-19 recovery, but is this actually that um, funding that had been um, accumulated with the arbitrage um, activities we've had a few years ago and, and was sort of, there was that lump sum there which wasn't fully spent? Because uh, if that was the case, I, yeah, I would um, be supportive of, of providing them with some funding from me, not necessarily the, or the whole 16,000, but at least um, giving them something to help them through. Claire, Ken is prepared to answer that one for you. Uh, yes, so, so, so through the chair, um, just um, confirming your understanding there, um, yeah, that, 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 that staff were looking to that, um, that COVID fund, um, which, which, as you say, did, um, did originate from arbitrage um, monies um, secured over, over the last three or four years. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I'd definitely be supportive of that then. Okay. So Andrew um, and then Bruce and then Lou. Hi, yeah, thanks, um, Susan. Look, I'm to me, this is a perfect use for that um, that recovery fund. This group got totally flattened by COVID before they had a chance to get going, and um, I, I support using the fund in this way without without impacting on the rates as well. Thanks, Andrew. Bruce, and then let, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, I'm fully supportive of it, but I'm Bit bewildered with they applied for ten thousand, although they've got a financial shortfall of sixteen thousand this financial year, and we're giving them more than they asked for. So um, that that was my only query. I'm not, I don't uh, question uh, giving them a bit more. Their their shortfall on the on the left hand side, and it's yeah, that's what they asked for. They asked for that yesterday, ten thousand. I thought so. That's my only query. I'm fully supportive. Yeah. Yeah, so they've only requested 10. I, I, my impression from them yesterday was that although they're not going to, you know, fall off at the edge of a cliff right now, it's pretty uncomfortable. So perhaps the feeling is that 10 would, would cover it. And then although they have that shortfall, they believe that with um, bookings coming through slowly, they're going to eventually climb out of that hole. That was sort of the impression I got. But mm. I think maybe that that 16,000 total in that column should probably be 10. Yeah. yeah, well, that's in the, for the current financial year. They've got a shortfall of the 16. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, but their requested funding was 10. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I think yes, we should just leave it at the 10. So. Yeah, so, so through <laughs> yeah. 4.4. Uh, uh, actually, at the moment, it's not included at all. So, um, yeah, so, so, yeah so, so, so look, I acknowledge that it looks like, um, like, like just reading that again, yeah, the, yeah. the figure on the board really should be 10,000. Um, yeah, we, we've picked up the shortfall figure rather than the, the request figure. Excellent. Cool. So, on the assumption that that's 10, um, I, I, I've got Andrew and Roger online. Sorry, Susan, forgot to lower my hand. Sure thing, Roger. Yeah, well, I just put mine up. In there. Um, yeah, I, uh, the, after the question that I asked um, yesterday uh, about if it was quite clear that it was the impact of COVID, and I think they indicated that they saw that there was some signs of recovery already occurring. So I, I think um, that the COVID recovery fund is the appropriate place for that uh, funding to come from. And perhaps a, a question here of Ken, how much of that fund actually remains? Like, is there sufficient in that fund to meet this request of 10,000? Are, are there other requests? What's, what's the chance of an application to that fund being successful, or is that something that we can actually agree on and drive from this meeting? Uh, so, um, so through the chair, I think um, Sally will hopefully have the information about how much is available. I'm, I'm sure there is money available, which is why staff have recommended it, but Sally will talk to the number. Yeah, 
Uh, if I can, through the chair, um, yes, there is funding available from memory. I think there's around 170,000 still in that fund. And um, we also um, do want to check if there are any other groups. We're aware of another group that has been impacted by COVID to bring to, um, as we've um, outlined within the staff report, to bring a report back to the SPMP committee in June for consideration. So put this along with another um, club that are facing some of issues. Issues, um, around COVID and not receiving um, events funding through this time. So um, the staff recommendation is to um, bring back um, applications uh, for the COVID-19 uh, recovery fund to, for consideration and uh, there is enough funding to support this application as well as the other one that we're aware of. Good, thanks Sally. So that um... That basically supports my, uh, well, confirms my support that that would be the appropriate place for, for this application. Great, thank you. Uh, Philip. Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, I think um, their request was definitely a result of COVID and that's where the money should be coming from, from the recovery fund. And um, because Ohapo's location, it's so centrally located to a huge area of wide pass, so it's not just um, supporting Ohalpa, it's supporting a big portion or a western portion of wide pass, so fully support it from the recovery fund. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Any other comments here? Oh, Lou, and then Jim. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just quietly, um, we worked very hard uh, with OHAPO just recently, and they were going to have the 100 years commemoration of the Peace Cup, and uh, that all fell apart. There was a fair amount of work went into that. It was one of the big events that we were going to hold out there. Um, I've operated in two other clubs, and we've actually had to fund ourselves through this COVID thing, and we've done it through DaVenture. They have no debt at the moment and you, you can actually we've operated with our senior members and members and uh, they've formed the ventures which are operational over five years at a marginal interest rate and it's an investment in your own community just a thought on the sideline but i'm supportive of us supporting them i do know what it's like with a small club very hard to get ahead and it's a, a quite a difficult process at the moment where you've owned the operational for what two years three years I think it's about two or three years I went out to the opening. So uh, very supportive. Jim. Through you, Madam Chair, along the um, lines of Lou's uh, comments, I'm supportive of, of the uh, money coming from that COVID recovery fund, but just make the, the comment and, and possibly warning that um, community groups have suffered significantly through this COVID um, pandemic. And a lot of clubs, from my knowledge, are, are struggling because of it. So um, it is a, a really difficult situation for them. And we don't want to see organisations fall over for, for want of a little bit of support to get them over the hump, as it were. Um, Lou, I take on board your comments. If the clubs can organise their own affairs, that's great. But um, some of these community organisations run on, on really... A, smell of an oily rag and um, we could lose some of our services to our community if we're not careful so knowing there's a little bit of money in that recovery fund and help out those ones that demonstrate good management and they just need a bit of help I think is a good good use of those funds. Yeah, look, I'm a little, thanks, thanks Jim. I'm personally a little bit conflicted on this mainly because I, I guess um, Sitting on the Te Omutu Community Board, you know, for some years now, we've received increasingly large numbers of applications from community groups from all walks of life, um, and they all ha have their role to play in our community. And, and I guess I just feel a little bit uneasy that in many instances, their running costs aren't met, they've all been impacted by COVID. And so I can't, I'm struggling to differentiate between those applications from those smaller organisations who follow the discretionary funding path um, and, and are unsuccessful. 
versus this. And, and I guess I just I just feel a little bit uneasy about that. And also understanding that there's obviously the, the rugby club at, at or Hopal that are, you know, although doing it tough, like a lot of groups, um, probably not quite as tough as what um, some of them are doing. And they're sort of in the background of that, of that rec, rec centre. And I'm wondering if maybe they could be um, perhaps doing a little bit more heavy lifting there to help, help the um, community centre out. I don't know, I'm just sort of speaking off the cuff a little bit there, but I just mindful of, of the people we've had to reject, which is a bit heartbreaking um, at a community board level for that discretionary grant money. And this is quite a considerable amount of money compared to the you know, $350 people want for photocopying to run a, a, you know, a small um, musical gathering for the reti right, retirees in a, at a ho in their home or something. So I don't know, I just, I feel a little bit awkward about it. So I'm interested to understand how everybody sits on it support you with that, Madam Chair. And I'd like to say that there was 68,000, wasn't it? $68,000 that we had for discretionary uh, applications for the uh, discretionary fund. And I think we only were able to have 30 or something thousand that we had. So it shows you, and a lot of these organisations, religious churches and things we've never seen before. So there is a, a need out there. Marcus and then Ken, oh, and then Ken. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a really popular venue and a great, and a great location, but I think um, where they lean themselves down is the organisation and promotion of, of, of the recreation centre. And I think, you know, if we give them 10,000, that might just give them the leg up to start their socials again and start engaging with the community and getting the word out there so that, that this might be the last time they actually come to us because it will naturally pick up. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so I guess um, I guess just to alleviate your concern, Chair, Chair um, the, the staff recommendation is that this is considered at the um, at the next strategic planning and policy committee meeting in, in regard to potential allocation of of that recovery fund. Um, so so in regard to the concern that you've just ex expressed, I guess that that could be um, considered in that forum in regard to how much of the ten thousand dollars is um, is met. Um, as Sally indicated before, we are very aware. Of a um, of another community organisation with a very similar type of facility um, that has also got exactly the same same struggles. Actually, I'm, pre I'm prepared to name it. It's, it's the Grandstand Trust um, here in um, here in Tiamutu. Um, so so there's there's been some discussions with them over a few months in regard to exactly the same concerns that um yeah that um Ohopo has um has raised. Um so um yeah so 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 what we are what we're looking to do is bring a bring a proposal or a recommendation recommendation in regard to both those um, and I suggest that um yeah that and in, in, in looking at both those so that then you can consider the quantum um that, that might potentially be be granted it's, it's probably not a discussion for today okay thanks for that clarification Ken uh, Claire you have something to add well yes um just just um the fact that you've mentioned uh, like you and Lou that that you've got other um aware of other organizations that are also needing assistance like when we first set up the fund, we, we we did sort of have a process where we put out a general invitation, you know, for people to make applications. And um, perhaps it's time to do something along the same lines again. Um, yeah, I, I know that um, that original group was disbanded that was considering applications, but, but if we're aware that, you know, this time around there's, um, yeah, others that are in the same boat, um, I mean, that's what the fund was set aside for. So would that be something that could be considered at the next um, SPNP meeting too? Yeah, so if I yeah. came through, oh, no. sorry, if I came through the chair, um, if, if there are other groups, uh, the community advisors have been working with various groups as well as um, talking to other colleagues within council around um, um, any clubs that may be um, having, you know, struggling through the COVID times and impact of COVID on revenue and opportunities for them. But please, um, as we did talk about in December last year, in terms of any applications for the fund, um, they will be reported through to the SPMP committee for um, a approval for consideration. So happy for elected members to um, raise uh, those clubs directly um, with myself so that we can follow up with them. Um, but there is, has been quite a bit of work done by our community advisors in the community around trying to understand um, these groups. And that's where we would, uh, the places to bring them back to the SPMP committee for um, that consideration. Thanks, Sally. 
So are we comfortable, therefore, that we just refer this yeah, as proposed? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that um, resolution. With, okay, we've caught that one. We're all good. I guess we can, Liz, you can return. <laughs> it's dodgy. <laughs> oh dear. So the next um, issue is uh, to, for us to address is the Cambridge Town Hall application. Obviously, um, Roger and Philip um, uh, have expressed a conflict of interest on this, so they'll be put in a waiting room on Zoom. So um, see you. We'll see you shortly. Excellent. Right, who's going to kick me off in terms of this application for the Cambridge Town Hall? Obviously, they're seeking quite a significant amount of money initially, and with a bit of um, horse trading, it came, it's come down to be partially funded for 40000 um, Marcus, you look like you're interested in saying something. Then Andrew, then Claire. Um, the Town Hall for a long time has needed a substantial um, bit of cash thrown at it because, I mean, it's, it's, it's an asset for the community and it's one that's well-loved and and you know can be better utilized and i think we need to give the trust a real good head start and, and yeah a, a, a good go for it and so I, I mean, i'd try and somehow get them 150 but yeah if we can get them 40,000, then i'm for it yeah andrew then clear yep i agree with marcus this um this is a, a great asset for the community of cambridge um, although it has been difficult in recent years for it to um, uh, operate properly, I suppose, and, and, and largely because it hasn't been um, well maintained. Um, I have a question for perhaps council or um, maybe Ken. Um, could any part of the 40,000 also come from that COVID recovery fund? Because it seems to me that uh, COVID has impacted significantly on um, the trust's ability to, to generate revenue from, from the hall. Chief, can I just say that, that, that I, I sort of agree with Andrew, but I think partially it's the council's fault as well that let it get to this stage. And, and it's not just COVID that's got the town hall where it is, it's, it's, it's council's. Ken. Uh, yeah, look, look with the with the greatest um, of respect to Councillor Brown, I'm I'm sort of struggling with the connection there because um yeah because in 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 relation to what the um Town Hall Trust or Town Hall Community Trust is asking for this money for look it's um it's it's around um staffing new staffing um yeah yeah they're 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 they're, they're basically an organisation in, in establishment mode so they're looking to bring people on board um and they're also looking to um to um yeah create a brand and and promotion to activate that hall. So look, I, yeah, I, I really struggle that that would be consistent with the um, the purposes of the of the COVID recovery fund. M much as I'd like to keep this out of the rates line, um, yeah, I, I just um, yeah, I'm really struggling with that um, with that connection. Yeah, through you, um, Susan. Look, um, that's fair comment, Ken. I, I, I totally agree, actually. Thanks, Andrew. Clear, and then low. Um, yeah, thanks. Look, I agree that the Cambridge Town Hall here is an absolute asset for the community and um, we need to make sure that it operates well. However, I have actually been rather disappointed that we haven't heard anything from the Trust until now. Like we actually funded them, you know, um, with our the LTP last year. So they got, they, they began operating, you know, in June 2021. And then this is the first that we've heard of them. Um, and they're asking for more money and quite a substantial amount. Like I would have expected that we would have had, um, you know, even a six monthly report and and to be informed of what, what they were wanting to do. Like um, I think that their, their budget that they've put in is really generous. Um, and I really, I mean, I'm glad that the request has gone down to $40,000. Um, I'm in a, position at the moment where I don't really want to breach that 4.4% rates increase so I, I'm, I, I'm really conflicted because I, I, I don't want to you know, cut, cut them off um, the legs and not, and not have any opportunity to 
have a really good go at it. But on the other hand, um, I, I, I am a bit disappointed that, that we haven't had more communication before this. And so I'm, I'm worried that even if we fund them more, we still might not see anything happening. Thanks, Claire. I think Ken will address that. Yeah. Yeah, so, so look, I wouldn't, um, yeah, so through the chair, I wouldn't like um, any um, bad reflection on, on, on the trust in, in that regard. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so we have been um, at a staff level in very close contact with the trust. And in fact, um, of recent times, um, yeah, we've been meeting with them on a fortnightly basis um, on, a, on a couple of um, occasions during, um, dur during the past few months. Um, yeah, Kirsty has, um, has very much um, offered to, to, to come Come and um, come and talk to um, to council, um, pro probably in the form of the of the um, yeah, the, yeah, the finance and corporate um, corporate committee. Um, but um, yeah, but what we have been working up in the background is the um, is the is the services and lease agreement. Um, and I've said on on the, the couple of times that the question has come up in terms of um, communication with council, I, I've said actually the ideal time to do that is when we bring the the, the services and lease agreement through. Um, so so I guess I've been um, I've been counselling um, the trust in the background in terms of, yeah, you know, let's, let's take up that opportunity. Um, look, look that, that trust has been, uh, they are a trust of um, volunteers, it's all volunteer time, and I and I know that they've, um, they've as, they, um, as they spoke um, yesterday, they, they referred to this, they've had a couple of really, really quite significant um, strategic um, strategic planning sessions, um, the, the first one facilitated by, by Beef Gate and B, um, the second one by, by John Broadley, so yeah, look, they, they, they've given up um, full Saturdays, as I understand it, to um, yeah, to 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 get their heads together, um, to um, yeah, to um, to to put together a vision that will activate that place. So um, yeah, so look um, yeah, yeah, let's let, let, let's not um, yeah, think think um, I guess un, unfairly of them, um, that they are very happy to um, to be to be coming and talking to council at the at the appropriate time, um, and then there on after um, yeah, what what we've provided for in that services agreement is that six monthly they will. They will come and report to council. So yeah, so 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 look, it's, it is it is a real partnership. Um, yeah, they they are certainly not charging off on their on their own steam. They 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 are very much working in partnership with council. That, that you can you've sort of yeah given me a bit of um, yeah comfort there and reassurance. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, Liz, sorry, Lou, then Liz. I just ask everybody to have a quick look at page uh, 100, uh, 1016. That's the budget that they prepared. Um, go through it. One thing that worries me is that we'd only see $1,000 income per, um, per month. They, that doesn't vary. This is for 2022, 2023. Gives them an operating deficit of 3,399,000 at the end of the year for the uh, period to actually done. They've also included their $15,000 wages on every month, which gives you a total of 180,000. There's some quite interesting figures here. Um, I think it's very aspirational, but surely they're going to earn more than $1,000 a month. That is obviously just one lease. And there's nothing, that's total income all the way through. <laughs> Ken, I think is- Yeah. So, so look I, I, again with, um, with with respect here. So um, yeah. So look, this uh, this this budget was um, was put together by by the trust. The the the, the twelve thousand um, dollars. Yes, it does look very very ugly when you look at it on a month, on a monthly basis of a thousand dollars a month. Um, but 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 actually, honestly, that um, yeah, that they did in, in the last financial year. I um, mean, and this was under under council control. Um, yeah, the the town hall did did earn higherage income of only twelve thousand dollars so 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 yeah so so these are these are new people coming on um at the moment they aren't actually running the town hall council is, is still is still running the town hall at the moment because we haven't um, we haven't bid it on that that services agreement um yeah that twelve thousand dollars could have been um a little bit covid um covid impacted um but it also does reflect the very issue that we we um we, that we established this trust for um to, to get this place activated um the other comments that that i that i would make is is of course that this was a bid for 
were um, essentially for for four hundred thousand dollars. It was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars extra. Um, you know, um, staff have worked with them to moderate that bid back to forty thousand dollars, as you as you as you heard, and you saw them sitting here yesterday saying, "Yep, no, forty thousand will will do us." Um, so there was a bit of a combination there. Part of it was um, was ninety thousand dollars of money provided for in this year um, that hasn't actually been advanced to them. So yeah, so we've instantly taken that ninety thousand off. Um, but they have also acknowledged that with the um, considerable amount of, of work that they're looking to put in in the earlier part of, of the year, um, yeah, you know, from 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 one July, um, some 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 facility improvement, um, a whole lot of activation. Um, yeah, they they are actually saying to us that, that they are expecting income of greater that greater than twelve thousand dollars. But mm -hmm. but look, a bit, bit hard to put a figure on it. I, I, in fact, I think the, the the figure is more is in, in the order of an, another twenty thousand on 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 top of the twelve. That they're looking to that they're looking to achieve. I'm pretty sure they mentioned that um, that, that number yesterday. Um, yeah. So 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 look, this was their first crack at it. We we've had some we've had quite significant discussions with them since, and, and like I say, they've they've certainly moderated their bid for funds back substantially. Yeah, comfortable with that, Lou? Yeah, I, it's just I say I, I get a balance sheet. And I <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Lou, um, thanks, Susan. Look and look. Councillor Lou Brown, you're very astute because this is the reason why we established uh, this, this group because it is a very, a very sorry state of affair where a much loved building um, you know, is only able to attract $1,000 worth of bookings um, per month. So I, I guess when we look back at the reasons um, you know, for establishing a trust, it was, it was to be community led and that's what, we're, that's what we're doing now, is have it community-led so the community can fall back in love with the building um, that it built back in 1909. So I'm, I've, I've got great confidence in this group. And, um, and I guess just a reminder, um, as Ken said, this group don't officially take over the, the hall until uh, 1st of July this year. So we're still two months away, which would be the reason why we haven't really heard from them yet. Uh, and there's a lot of planning going on in the background. Um, and I guess um, looking at their reports and things like that, they're obviously very aspirational, which is which is great. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm not I'm not too worried about the fact that we haven't heard from them too much because I know um, you know from one July I, I imagine the expectation is that we will um, get get sort of uh, reported um, regularly. There's just the other um, yeah I guess point going going forward is that I'm I'm a little bit concerned around the sustainability. Um, so they're looking to employ staff, which is absolutely fantastic. That's logically the next step. But you no, know, I don't want to provide just one year of funding. I mean, those staff need to know that they're going to be employed in a year's time. We don't want to see um, staff, you know, um, feeling uncomfortable or the, or the trust being in a position where they don't know whether they can employ them. So it's some kind of, um, you know, commitment from council around that you know might be appropriate and I guess it'll be something that um, we need to keep a watchful eye on um, there's one thing I do know with with venue management and that is it is the staff um, the commitment and the passion that will sell the building to back to the community and uh, and I'm no doubt they'll find the right people to do that but those people need to stick around um, you know we need to see um, some longevity around um, the employment uh, that's what I'd like to see anyway points well made Liz um, certainly something that we need to look at into the future there's no point setting them up without any um, security of, of tenure or, or um, support okay so I think we've probably talked that one out a fair amount and nobody else has any other um, views to the contrary we're comfortable with that partial funding at 40,000 as as discussed yeah that looks to be the way excellent so We'll move on then to the next one. We can bring Philip and Roger back in. Excellent. And um, Liz and and um, Mayor Jim yeah. and Ken. Oh my goodness! It's flying it's alone. I'm going solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long walk for three and a half, three isn't half, it? Okay. So obviously the Waipa Community Trust have sought three and a half thousand dollars. Staff recommendation is to include it. Obviously, Ken um, 
submitted on behalf of the trustees today as the treasurer. Um, and I, def I mean, from my part, uh, and I don't, I'd be surprised if there's anybody who doesn't um, agree with me, believe this is a really a, a worthwhile um, investment, if you like, given the funding that, or the amount of good work that this trust does. So I'll kick that off. I see lots of noddings of head. Bruce, uh, then Andrew, then Philip. No, I'm, I'm fully supportive of it, and I'm quite um, astounded that members have to leave the chamber for three and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> they need the exercise. Uh, Philip, then Andrew. Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I support this, um, very much support this. So, yep, happy with that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Yeah, it'd be crazy to let this, uh, this trust fold for three and a half thousand dollars. Totally support. Yeah, I agree. I, th I don't know that there's any worth any any more um, discussion to be had on this one. We seem to all be. Oh, Lou, Lou. All I got to say is, I actually said yesterday, Madam Chair, it was a, this is essential to our community for all those smaller organisations or organisations that cannot register as a trust. They can actually apply through this to get their applications through to people that need it. Okay. Fantastic. So I think we can well safe, we can safely say that's a resounding yes. So we'll give that one a tick. So we can bring back in the crew who are all outside being rowdy. But actually, what I, I, I think we might just take a small adjournment for um, a short time just to collect ourselves and have a, have a wee break for 10 minutes. So let's uh, reconvene then at 10 to 11. <laughs>